Hi, this is Jeff Heaton with Applications of Deep Neural Networks for Washington University. This is Module 9, Regularization and Dropout, Part 3, Dropout in TensorFlow. Dropout regularization is a fairly recent technology. It was introduced in 2014. It is in a paper called Dropout, A Simple Way to Prevent Neural Networks from Overfitting. The paper that this technology was introduced in is actually a very readable deep learning uh, paper. Dropout is actually a very simple technique, but extremely effective. Just to show you it from the paper, at least the way the paper is describing this, is you can essentially set up individual layers so that that neural that individual neurons will be dropped from those layers as the neural network trains. Now the important thing to realize about a neural network is that these 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 neurons that are dropped out, this is not permanent. The, they are only dropped during the training. If you just look at the end result of a, a neural network that was trained with dropout, you could not tell if dropout was actually used on it. Much like L1 and L2, you really cannot tell. And the actual calculation code of a neural network with dropout, it does not affect the calculation at all. This only happens during training. So it, it removes these neurons at each training epoch. Usually you will specify a percentage for dropout. So you'll say dropout 5% or 50% or some percent of the neurons at each training epoch and leave the other ones in there. So it is constantly staying, it is constantly removing neurons and having some chaos upon the the training of the neural network because it's the neural network is training increasing the weights and trying to get those each of the neurons to uh, weights to a point that will that will decrease the overall error and as it's doing that you're removing neurons and in the process you're removing all of the weights that were connected with them now the weights don't go away they don't go to zero they are effectively zero but they do not lose their values so it's just like giving the neuron the day off or the epoch off. In fact, that's a sort of a way to compare it. If you think of a company, and if you think if the company used dropout, it would simply, it would pick that percentage, like 20%, and every day it would tell 20% of the workers when they showed up on the factory floor that they can go home. Well, now the other 80% has to work more difficult. It's more difficult for them. They have more work to do. But they also have to learn the, the trades or the skills that the, the missing workers were uh, performing for them. And that's somewhat how this decreases overfitting. By neurons getting too specialized in one particular task, they will tend to become overfit and start to, start to memorize rather than generalize. This prevents neurons from becoming truly that that specialized and that adept at particular data input. So you're, you're removing the neurons, now the weights of the remaining ones are going to be adjusted all the more to try to push them into serving whatever function those missing, uh, those missing neurons were for. Now various different implementations. So here we're showing inputs being dropped. That may or may not uh, happen in the particular implementation. In Keras, you're allowed to have inputs drop as you want to. You specify this really layer by layer in, um, in Keras. While the input neurons can be dropped depending on the implementation, the bias neurons are typically not dropped or, or not dropped by the uh, dropout algorithm. This diagram showing the standard net and after dropout, this is really not specifying which of these are the bias. This is a more general view of it. But if you look down, this paper shows kind of at training, present with the probability P, so the probability 20%, 80%, whatever you specify. 
And then at test time or when you're running it, it's always there. So this just shows you, like I said, this is only a training phenomenon. How you can tell that biases are not used in this is essentially they're showing you that the normal weight calculation for a neural network. So you have the weights times the, the inputs, which are usually called X, but in this case they're calling them Y, plus the bias, because it's, it's essentially the intercept. You'll notice they modify this by doing a Bernoulli distribution just based on the probability of dropout. And now you're multiplying your, you'll notice that the, your, the, the y tilde term that you have here is multiplied only against the weight, not the biases. So the multiplying by the y tilde, that is potentially removing this weight because if this becomes zero, it's going to, it's just going to drop out. So the biases are not changed, and that's also evident here where they show you the standard network. The plus one, that's the bias, because the bias is always one, times the bias weight. And you'll notice the normal neurons, the non-biased neurons inputs, are affected by the, by the potential dropout during training, but no effect is made to the, to the biased neurons. So, Definitely be aware that this is not something that is really affecting the, uh, the actual the biases. Input neurons can be dropped. Hidden neurons can be dropped. Output neurons are not dropped. That would, that would not be productive to the, uh, to the overall training of the neural network. And then this paper just goes on to show you how this can be applied to various neural networks. And they do some training showing or some empirical evidence on the classic mince data set, so the, the digits data set, and some other data sets as well, showing the improvement with dropout and without dropout of these, um, of these trains, of the training. And they go on to show you, they, they run this primarily on image data sets, but it can be used really on, on any sort of, uh, of data set. And again, I sort of repeat the, the, uh, the diagram here. I show you that while that the bias neurons are not affected, however, the weights between a bias and a dropped network, those are definitely affected and will be, um, uh, will be removed during the training step. The normal hyperparameters that you need to specify for these are the neuron count, the activation function, just like anything, it's usually rectified linear unit for the, for the hiddens, and the dropout probability. This is the actual code to, to make this happen. And before I show you the code, I will show you a website that has a neat animation of this. And this shows you basically a neural network that's learning the exclusive OR problem. So it's learning to, um, to take these inputs and produce the XOR operator output. And it shows you that as it's doing this, certain, um, uh, certain neurons are being dropped or not. Now this is not I, I don't know that I completely agree with this implementation because they are um, they are essentially showing that all of the um, all of the the neurons can be dropped so they're not really showing the bias neurons there or they're incorrectly dropping them but this is a this is an algorithm that shows you as this is doing the other thing that I don't particularly like about this is it doesn't seem to be converging on a solution very quickly if this is XOR uh, well, first of all, the two outputs are not really differentiating, but this does show you sort of how randomly it is, it is dropping various um, parts of this. Now let's look at the code in TensorFlow.
This is all code just like we've seen actually in this module. We're loading the miles per gallon data set. We are calculating the, we're filling in missing values for the horsepower that are the median and we're separating based on miles per gallon because we want to train based on that. This is where we run into the dropout layer. Usually it occurs in between two layers and it is essentially specifying that the the inputs from this input layer into here, so the inputs of the 25 layer, we're going to potentially drop 0.2 of those. Now you can add dropout layers really between any two of the hidden layers and that would be fine. I'm going to keep this though just with a single dropout layer there. Again, this is something else you have to tune and experiment with to see what is going to be useful. I usually find lower dropout values. I mean, if you're dropping 90%, uh, like if you change that to a 0.9, and you're dropping 90% of the neurons, it's not going to work too well. Dropping 100% of them obviously would not work at all. So let's go ahead and run this so that we see the actual output from this. Now it's somewhat tricky getting the, um, getting it to actually help in this small of a, of a data set. But if you, yeah, that's more what we would expect. If we move it closer to the output, and again, this is the kind of playing that you have to do with this to really see what it's going to do. I'm going to probably take that down even further and you run it. Now this is just not a data set that is really going to be helped all that much by dropout. Now it's it's getting better. It's at least not hurting. Do no harm so to speak. But when we see more complicated data sets and particularly the uh, the Kaggle project Definitely dropout has been very useful for projects in the in the previous semesters. If you want to you want to add this really just in between hidden layers. You could even put it there. However, you cannot put it here can't end on a dropout. But typically we will leave it at something like this. Okay, this is the end of this part for uh, dropout and the end of the module as well. In the next module we will get into another type of neural network altogether, the LSTN.